Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my Combo Box Row Limit series. Part two of two, just two parts. If you haven't watched part one yet, go watch it. You'll find a link down below and then come on back. We now join the program already in progress. All right, so what we can do is, and this is where the programming part of the lesson comes in, right? For this combo box, we're going to go to events. We're going to find the on change event. On change fires whenever you change the data in the box, even if you just type a character. All right, dot, dot, dot. That'll bring up the code editor. All right, now in here, we're going to say, and I covered this in the other video, it's going to be customer combo dot row source equals select customer ID comma LF. Go to the next line. From customer LFQ, that's our query, where, now here's where you put the filter part in, LF, like, and it's gonna be double, double quote, asterisk, quote, to close that part of the string, and customer combo dot text. Remember, it's dot text, because you want the actual text in the combo box that the user's typed in, not the value of the combo box itself, which normally is an ID number, right? So you want the text in the box. And then open up the quotes again, asterisk, double quote, space quote. I know lots of double, double quotes in there. I got a whole video on that too. For those of you who don't know, this becomes a double quote inside the string. All right, then our order by LF, semicolon, close it up. Okay, so that's going to re-query the combo box every time you type a letter in there and only show records that have that in there. Okay, and then we'll do a customer, I can't type today, customer combo dot drop down. Open up the box form. Okay, now I don't necessarily want this firing every time they type in a character unless they've typed in at least three characters. Right, because if just one character, you're gonna get all the A's or all the I's or whatever it is, that's not enough. So for this to fire, I want it to be after they've typed in at least three characters or whatever number you specify. All right, so let's tab all this in, indent it a little bit. We're gonna come up top here. We're gonna say, if the length of the customer combo dot text is greater than two, that means they've typed in at least three, or if you like, you know, you say greater than or equal to three, whichever you want then it'll do this stuff okay else we're gonna blank it customer combo dot row source equals nothing we're gonna just have nothing in the box or if you prefer you can have it equal to just the customer on the customer form if you want to right select customer id comma lf same thing right from Customer, come here, customer, LFQ, right? Where customer ID equals forms, customer F, customer ID, right? And what I forget, oh, this little guy, there, All right? And here we don't need to drop it down. There's just one record. And now what I'm going to do to make things faster is I'm going to take this and put this in the uh, the regular row source for the combo box. So right here, we're going to do the same thing from customer LFQ, where customer ID equals forms customer F customer ID, just like that. In fact, well, yeah, we'll just leave it like that. That's fine. As I was gonna say, you can go directly to the table and put the... You can concatenate the stuff yourself, but no, this is good. This is good. All right, hit OK. Let's close it, close it, save it, open it, orders. Okay. That Notice how fast that opened, by the way, because it's only pulling one record now. See? But if I want to change it to somebody else, I can type in, let's say, uh, zero, zero, zero. Drop it down now. And look at that, there's all the other zero, zero, zeros in there. See? And now, from the query, since we're, since we're doing the filtering here, 
All right, we can get rid of that criteria out of here for the is active. Let's just get rid of that. Because now the combo box is handling filtering all those records. So go to orders. It's nice. It loads up nice and fast now because it's just showing you him. But if you want to change it, I'm going to type in three, four, five. And it's going to load, but it's, it's taking its sweet time. Let's see here. Let's go with zero, zero, zero again. What we get? Oh, I just messed up. I just realized what I did. Hit escape a few times. I'm leaving this mistake in the video too. Look what I just did. This is a learning moment for both of us. <laughs> what just happened here? I took that criteria out of there, but I didn't take this one out. So now, no matter what, this query is only going to return this record. <laughs> All right. So be careful of stuff like that. Let's delete this. So basically now customer LFQ is back to where it began. But it should still load up much faster because the combo box is only pulling in that one record. All right. Now, if I come in here now and type in one, two, three. See, it's 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 working. It's just there's a delay there. So, you know what? I don't like that visual delay. Let me hit escape again. Let's come in here. Let's manually turn on the hourglass. It used to be an hourglass. Remember way back in like Windows 95, it was an hourglass. Now it's a spinny circle. But that's it's in access. It's called the hourglass. So right now, immediately, we're going to say do command dot hourglass true. And don't forget to turn it back off again. Otherwise, you'll see the spinny hourglass forever. I'm going to do it right before the drop down. False. There we go. All right. Now let's see what it looks like. Open it up. OK, I only got the one customer showing up in there. I'm going to type in one, two, three. Where's my hourglass? Okay, it's, it's, it's still a slight short delay, but at least you get the hourglass. Now you're only seeing records in here that have that one, two, three. All right, four. Yeah, the hourglass isn't coming up as fast as I'd like it to. All right, it's, it's working. It's just slow. It's just slow. Now, another thing you can do, and this seems completely counterintuitive, but if you've got a combo box that's still taking forever to load, you can unsort it. And it will load much faster. I know you, most combo boxes, you want to see things sorted. But if you turn off the sorting, it'll run faster. So let's come into here, design view. Let's make sure this is not sorted here. And if you run it, you'll see immediately it loads up a lot faster. Okay, save that. And also in the combo box itself, let's turn off the sorting in here. So we need to take out this order by line right there. In fact, I'll just, well, yeah, just let's just remove it. Okay, now that the box is not sorted, it's going to load a lot faster too. Orders. All right, let's put in one, two, three. And it's a little bit faster. Not completely, but better than it was. There it goes. I mean, you got to kind of search a little bit more, but if you, you know, if you're typing in stuff like that, then it'll run faster. All right, I think yeah, there's all kinds of, there's all kinds of tricks you can play. You can... If you really want, you can filter this before you even get there. Like if you've got on, a, on your main menu, you could put a couple of different criteria on here. The state, um, you know, whatever other criteria you want. Salesman, like I mentioned before. And then before you even get to this point, that box will be filtered down. If you like learning this stuff, come check out my website. I got tons and tons of different developer lessons available. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, my friends. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list.
and you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. 
I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.